When we graph absolute value functions, we are going to refer back to the generic equation for an absolute value function, which is y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Yesterday with the graphing calculators, we explored a little bit of what a does to the graph, what h does to the graph, what k does to the graph. Today we're going to combine that all together and we're going to graph absolute value without the help of a calculator. So yesterday we used the calculator to help us figure out what these numbers do and now we're going to put that all together. So as a reminder, A is responsible for stretches, shrinks, it's kind of like the quote slope of the absolute value meaning that from the vertex, the A value tells you how much to go up and out to form the other points on the V. A also tells you whether the graph opens upward or opens downward. If it's positive, it opens upward. If it's negative, it opens downward. H is the side to side movement. And because in this formula it says minus H, that makes it backwards. So minus H will move the function to the right and plus h will move the function to the left. k is responsible for the vertical movement, the up and down movement, and it's perfectly normal. So plus k moves the function up and minus k moves the function down. The, yep. The vertex of this graph is the point hk. Now remember, because h is in the formula after a minus sign, if the function says x plus 2, like number 5 does, that actually means in this function it was x minus a negative 2. So your h value is actually negative 2. So your h value is opposite of what you see because the original function had minus h. The k value is perfectly normal, so our vertex is negative 2, 3. The a value, what's the a value for number 5? Negative 1. All right. When you're graphing this, if you want to identify the vertex and then plot the vertex, that's fine. If you would prefer to do left 2 up 3 from this equation, that would be fine also. So the vertex is negative 2, positive 3. It might be wise to either use a different color for your vertex or to use like a square shaped dot or a triangle shaped dot. So you remember which point is your vertex. Because as we use the A value of negative one, down one, out one, down one, out one, you wanna make sure that you don't forget which one is your vertex because you also have to go down and out to form the other part of the V shape. There is an axis of symmetry. I know you've heard that term before, even if you think you don't remember it. Yeah. The axis of symmetry going through the vertex makes that absolute value V shape symmetrical. So as you draw in your line, make sure you have a symmetrical V shape. The biggest mistake that I see with absolute value graphs is that students forget which point is their vertex and they just keep going they, they form a straight line here instead of a V-shape. They forget where they're supposed to bend the graph and make that symmetrical V-shape. All right, number six. You think you can do number six by yourself? No? I think you could. All right, first of all, you can either identify H and K using this formula or think about what these numbers mean for the graph. So if it says minus one inside the absolute value bars, remember inside the absolute value bars is crazy town, it's backwards. So that means write one. 
and the minus one after the bars is normal, that means down one. So your vertex is right one down one from the origin. So from your origin, right one down one. That is your vertex. Then you can write in what H and K in your vertex are. You don't actually have to write those in on your assignment. It's just there to help you. So our H value is 1. Our K value is 1. So our vertex is 1, 1. <laughs> what is the A value in this graph? The A value is also 1. It's a whole lot of 1s. Hey, the K value should be negative. It's a good thing I have students paying attention to what I'm doing. Otherwise, man, I would totally lead you all astray. So once you have your vertex in there, your A value is 1. So from that vertex, up 1, out 1. And make sure it's symmetrical, reflect it on the other side. And there's your V-shaped graph. Number seven. The reason I put seven and eight in here is I want you to see what happens when maybe there isn't a K value or there isn't an H value. So in number seven, notice that the minus one, the X minus one inside the absolute value bars indicates side to side movement and it's backwards. So this means right one. But notice there's nothing after the absolute value bars. So that means we aren't moving up or down at all. So your K value is 0. Our H value is 1. Our K value is 0. Now keep in mind that means right 1, 0 up and down. I've had some people trying to graph that point on the Y axis instead of on the X axis. So really make sure you're mindful of which direction is this vertex moving. The A value here is 2, and if you want to write that as a fraction, 2 over 1, that tells you that from this vertex we are going to go up 2, out 1, up 2, out 1, and so on. And don't forget to make your graph symmetrical and do the other side of the V. Number eight, notice there's nothing else inside the absolute value bars but the x. That means x is not being added or subtracted to, so no side-to-side -side movement whatsoever. Outside of the absolute value bars, we've got a plus one. That means up one. So our vertex is at the point zero, one. Our A value is negative 2 thirds. So from that vertex, and if you want to draw in the symmetry line so you can see where the vertex is, if you want to draw a little arrow reminding you which one's the vertex, whatever you need to do so you don't forget which one is the vertex, from that vertex down to out 3, and repeat that a few times. and then down to left three from the vertex to make sure you get the left side of the V. Number nine. 